did you do that? We cannot trust her. Because she's a god? Have I taught you nothing, boy? But she's helped us a lot. She lied. Some people value the privacy. Best not to judge, brother. When I require your counsel, Head, I will ask. Fair enough. Get me to Tyr's temple in the Lake of the Nine, and I'll get you to Jotunheim as promised. We know the temple. What's there? Only the last living giant in Midgard. Who better to tell us the way? The World Serpent? Wait, do you know how to talk to him? Indeed. He speaks an obscure tongue more ancient even than these mountains. None are left in Midgard who speak it. Except, of course, for me. You do? That's true. You wouldn't know it to look at him, but Jormungandr is a sparkling conversationalist. So, Mimir, why did Freya spin your face? No. Speak of Balder. He claims nothing harms him. Aye, Balder is blessed with invulnerability to all threats, physical or magical. The boasting of a god. Everyone has a weakness. Not him, I'm afraid. Balder is blessed with invulnerability to all threats, physical or magical. You just said that, Mimir. Did I? What is the source of this power? Well, as I recall, it, it involved, uh... A spell? Mimir? Parts of my brain must still be coming back to life. Just need a moment to finish waking up. Hope he's not broken. Mimir, we're on the lake. Perfect. Dock us near the bridge. never did tell me why Freya spit in your face. Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances, and not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won, but the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses, and for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore but a rather senseless waste of precious life. Wouldn't you agree, brother? <clears throat> Precisely. Enough was enough. And at last, Odin's most brilliant advisor became determined to find a more enlightened path. He set about to broker a peace between the gods. It took some convincing, but ultimately Odin was persuaded to marry his deadliest enemy. A certain Vanir goddess, legendary not only for her fertile beauty, but her genius at the very Vanir magic that Odin had long aspired to master. Freya married Odin? What was in it for her? It was a sacrifice to protect her people. A selfless act of love. Truly, she deserves better than she got. But of course, there's more to that story. Ed, how do we speak to the serpent? There's a horn on a platform at the middle point of the bridge. Take me to it. Finally! That horn! Good. Now put my lips to... That statue made in honor of Thor. And seeing as the world serpent absolutely abhors the fat dauber, he was probably sick of looking at it. But doesn't that hurt? 
Well, he and Thor have a bit of an unpleasant history between them. Or they will, anyway. So I guess waking up to see it was worse than the thought of lumps of solid stone passing through his gullet. You want me to ask him? No. Our only concern is Jotunheim. <laughs> Members me. Why you? Oh, no, that's not right. Eh. Mokuno Huntunku. Ah, oh, eh. Echo no Tuno Puno. the pain of your loss. He will help you. Curious. What is it? Oh, nothing to be concerned about. What is he doing? Making sure we're heading in the right direction. Listen closely now. We need two things to get us into the land of the giants. First, we need to learn the travel rune that opens realm travel to Jotunheim. Second, we need to carve that rune into the special gateway. Is that one of the people we first met you? Correct. Except the giants, in their infinite wisdom, saw to it that no ordinary chisel would do the job. Only the tip of a magical chisel opens that gate. Luckily, I know where it is. And it's not far. He looks kind of mad for a moment there. Now that, you thought I said you were friends of Odin. You'll forgive me. I've never spoken the ancient tongue sober. Wait, look! The water's dropped even further. You can see more of the realm towers and statues. I haven't seen new places to explore along the shore. Where is this chisel? Find me a boat, and we'll go from there. So when we get to the boat, we can either look for that special chisel now, or go exploring for a little while. I'm happy with whatever you want to do. Which way to the chisel? Rowing towards the statues of the oarsmen, then thread past between them. I can't believe Odin and Freya were ever married. Love and hate are more closely intertwined than you might imagine. For instance, Odin hates the giants and they him. But Thor's own mother was the giantess Bjorgun. One of Odin's great loves. So Thor's half god and half giant? <laughs> Once Fjordgun was gone, lonely ages passed for Odin. And as war with the Vanir raged, I could see what he really wanted in his bluster. And after no small amount of convincing, Freya agreed. For a while there, he really turned on the charm. He seemed happy. He seemed interested in making her happy. He granted us so many wishes I can scarcely recall them all. The peace held, and I truly believed all had worked out better than I could have planned. But Odin's true face showed itself again in the end. Oh, he won Freya's trust, and she taught him some of her Vanir magic, another choice she would live to bitterly regret. Sadly, despite his wise counselor's best efforts to persuade him that peace was the only true path to stave off Ragnarok, 
Odin never let go of his obsession with Jotunheim. The taste of Vanir Ma... Wow! It's like there was an entire city under the water. My lad. A forgotten city. What was it called? Now, uh, well, I forgot. We can beach over here. We're not getting in there without a key. Obviously, the marriage to Odin didn't last, but how did Fran end up a hermit in the woods? Oh, that was a singular piece of cruelty, even for Odin. As if the marriage wasn't punishment enough. Freya was better to him than he deserved. She stuck it out through all manner of indignity, all in the name of maintaining peace and safety for her people. Enough. No stories. Not while on foot. Our focus is the road. Completely understand. I'll finish later, lad. Johan. Are, 
Are you okay? No, Sam. My goods are underwater. The men are drowned, and yet their bodies continue to walk the beaches. Hellwalkers. They plague these lands. I was their captain. They died because of me. But these abominations sully their memories. I will find a way to free them from their tortured state. In this, I am determined. The thunderstorm scattered all three of my ships across the lake. I know not what I did to anger Thor. But his judgment was swift and brutal. Boy, what a sad story. Yes. We should help him. Really? You are surprised. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you'd care about helping a spirit. Fighting more Hellwalkers is good experience for you. Ah. Oh. Come here. You were telling us how Frey ended up living in the woods. Hi. She married Odin. You know what? I'll tell this one later. part of his crew? That's a tough crew. And all were his responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility. Does it frighten you? Uh... Responsibility. Oh, uh, no. I don't think so. I mean, I think it used to, but not as much anymore. Why is that? Well, being out here. You. It makes me feel more grown up. I can't translate this. Telling us how Frey ended up living in the woods. Aye, she'd married Odin. But Odin's madness, his tyranny, his corruption of her magics, it became more than she could stomach, and at long last she broke it off. Odin's wrath was fierce, and his curses upon her were more than she dared to fear. But her magic was so much stronger than his. After so much time together, he knew her vulnerabilities and exploited them to craft curses she could never break. Oh. Like not being able to leave Midgard. Worse still, he robbed her of her warrior spirit. Freya cannot fight, even to defend herself. No living thing may she harm by blade nor spell. In a world this belligerent, what choice does she have but isolation? Poor Freya. I guess if I was her, I'd spit in your face too. I lied. So would I.
seriously. How did this one captain lead so many men? He had their loyalty, so they followed. And then they all died. He must have been a bad leader. Why do you think that? Well, he led all these men to their deaths. True. But these men chose to follow. Hmm. Even good leaders make poor choices. The best take responsibility for them. Remember this. Boy. Sir. Okay. That's going in the journal. Hey, look. A torch. A torch is built with wood. That is a brazier. A brazier. Hmm. Looks like there's something written on it. Kavega. When lighting these braziers, Sailor and Hellwalkers will swarm to the flames like moths. I assume we have you to thank for freeing us from a watery grave. Us? Other spirits. The Lake of Nine is full of them. Most are able to move on from this realm. But we, lucky few, are stuck here in Midgard until our affairs are in order. Perhaps you can help them as well. We have no desire to help you, spirit. Ah, but you already have. I only wished to see the sky again. Farewell. Disappeared. Come, let us not be distracted.
dangerous beast. We will take him down together. I felt that one, brother. Ship. I hope the captain will be satisfied now. Unlikely. He was determined to put these men to rest himself. But he would have never been able to. That does not matter to him. Our victory will only remind him of his failure. Then why do we do this? Father, why did you really want to help the spear? You need the experience. I've had plenty of experience fighting these things. What's the real reason? Hmm. This man inspired loyalty. He took responsibility for his mistakes, and he was determined to fix them. These are good lessons for you. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. What's that down there? about a giant lady lots of books and, and visions. Ah, that would be Goa, the knowledge keeper. She was a gifted sorceress who gathered every tome of arcane wisdom she could find in the realms, all in the hopes of augmenting her powers of prophecy that she might find her lost husband, Arvandil. But it was not her husband she would glimpse in her visions, for it was Groa, seeing longer and farther than any before or since, who witnessed Ragnarok, the end and the beginning. But I can just tell you this story later. 
Mai. That's right. We kill. Uh. We laid them all to rest. I see. So even in death, I am a failure. But in life, you were honorable, strong willed, and you inspired loyalty. These are good qualities, aren't they, boy? Yeah. I couldn't believe how many men followed you here. I thank you for your kind words. May your journey have a more pleasant end than mine. Well, you're right. He didn't seem very satisfied. I guess you never really get over losing ones you care about. What did the spirit leave us? An offering to one of the gods. Can we use it? No, but perhaps the dwarves can. Hey, another brazier. I suppose you wish to light it. Can I? Kavagia. Oh! <laughs> 
more if you want. I don't believe it. Are you both alive? Another spirit. Yes, another spirit. Right then, where were we? Ah yes, Groa the Knowledge Keeper sought out her husband in visions, but instead discovered Ragnarok. When Odin caught word of her ultimate prophecy, he maneuvered to obtain her knowledge and hoard it for himself. And we'll pick this up later. This does more than decipher those Muspelheim runes. It also contains the travel room. Should we go visit the fire realm? Did I just imagine that? Hello. I can't remember the last time I saw something walk these islands that wasn't dead or corrupted. What do you mean? The desolation, child. Plagues this land, growing more severe with each passing winter. Do you know its cause? Not for certain, but I suspect the appearance of the World Serpent, along with the great flood that followed. Many were drowned, myself among them. The dead began to walk not long after. Do you need anything from us? Boy, I only wish to speak to someone again. A wish you have just granted. Thank you.
What's that? Correct. But can we this just... is not a debate. You must learn focus. Our journey need be your only concern. But what if they can help us? That one seemed to know little about the lake. And how does that help us with our goal? We won't know unless we ask. That story you start Odin schemed to capture the visions of Ragnarok recorded by Gloa, the knowledge keeper. Gloa knew Odin as a longtime patron of her services, and so she welcomed him into her library as a friend. Or I can just tell you the story later. <laughs>
Focus up! Well? Well, what? The brazier? If you must. Kavikia.
Never thought I'd see a scrap like that again. What do you want? To thank you. These dead Reavers drowned me many winters ago, and I've been itching to see them get theirs. So you died after all the flooding? Indeed. I came to the Lake of Nine to pillage Tyr's temple, but I underestimated the severity of the desolation. Have you seen other men? Living? A bearded one, with tattoos. Only the one standing in front of me. Thank you both for avenging my death. Useless. Well, we can't expect them all to know something useful. Maybe the next one will have more information. Keep your expectations low, boy. Spirits are rarely useful. How do they even exist? When you sever a man from his life, it is not always a clean cut. So you've met other spirits? Yes. Many. What were they like? Annoying. Finish that story you started? Odin schemed to capture the visions of Ragnarok recorded by Gloa, the Knowledge Keeper. What she did not know is that Odin himself was behind her husband's disappearance, having used his enchantments to conceal his death at Thor's hands from her sight. Smiling, jealous Odin took her by the throat, and with his very hands he stole her library and her life for his own. I always knew Odin was bad. That's just... Ruthless? Barbaric? Heartless? That's Odin. In fact, we would do well to sit here in silence for the next few moments and reflect on Odin's capacity for cruelty. And so... Reflect longer.
Last one. Might as well, right? Fine. Kvekia. spirit who wants something from us. How unexpected. What's wrong? I came to this lake with a group of tradesmen, seeking refuge from the desolation. But how could we know it was even worse at the Lake of Nine? We cannot undo your mistake, spirit. I know that. But I fear for my captain and crew. I believe they are still under the water. Will you find them for me? Is there anything you can offer us in return? I... I have little to offer. Oh. Well, I'm not sure... Wait! I died wearing a valuable family heirloom. It's yours, if you promise to find my crew. Deal. Thank you. You are learning. Why didn't you or Mom ever tell me about the desolation? I won't speak for your mother. 
but it was never my concern. Nor should it be yours. Doesn't it concern us if everything around us is dying? Our only concern is reaching Jotunheim. Really? Then why are we exploring all these islands? The resources we find improve our equipment. If we stray from the path, it is only to prepare ourselves for the journey ahead. I can live with that if it means we keep exploring. And helping others. Ooh, good find. Potential boy. down there. This is where the tower to Jotunheim should be. It feels strange somehow. No doubt some arcane magics were involved. I would be not at all surprised to learn you were sensitive to that. What do you want, Dwarf? I got another lead on my old pal on Vari. 
Meet me at the Lawn Soother Mines. There's some fancy dancy loot in it for you. Another lead? But we already found him. Well, found his hand anyways. I'll explain at the mines. These ones is just south of the river pass. Now you two want something, or are you just gonna stand there all gag scrapped and slack jawed? Let's...